Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 5th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we got an interesting diary by Boyan. Boyan recently investigated a compromise that was performed by a somewhat more advanced adversary and targeted against a particular company. After uh, this attacker was able to compromise a desktop, they used a Google Chrome extension in order to achieve persistence on that desktop. Google Chrome extensions, of course, are interesting because first of all, they have full control over whatever you're doing in Google. And then they're well a little bit more stealthy. In this particular case, they actually named the Google extension Forcepoint Endpoint for Windows. So this looks like sort of some legitimate uh, software that you may get as part of the Forcepoint security suite. And then, of course, they were able to observe the user browsing and they were able to exfiltrate or extract any authentication tokens from sessions that the user opened within that browser. With uh, these Google Chrome extensions, uh, you essentially can write JavaScript code that's then being loaded in the browser and that has the ability to modify any page that the user visits. And that's in part the point of many Google Chrome extensions. But where it gets really sort of interesting is how they exfiltrated the data. With uh, Google Chrome extensions, you have some storage available on the system. Now, it's not a lot of storage. I believe a total of about 100 kilobytes or so. It's a simple sort of key value storage and it feels a little bit like cookies. Each value, I believe, is about 8 kilobytes in size max. But in addition to being able to just store the data, Google Chrome extensions also have a feature that allows you to synchronize uh, that data. So if you have multiple devices, all of these devices run Chrome, this data can be synchronized across these different devices and Google's servers are being used as a relay for the synchronization. So what you would observe here is traffic from the browser to Google's legitimate servers. And this is exactly how the attacker then exfiltrated the data. So the attacker had the credentials of that user. The attacker was able to set up essentially a second system, or maybe they just used the API directly, we don't know that, that was logged in as the same user. And the result now was whenever the extension stole credentials of a web page that the user visited, well, uh, that credential was stored in the extension and then synchronized to the attacker via Google. So very stealthy uh, in that it's uh, difficult for anybody to sort of detect this as abnormal uh, traffic. It can also then, of course, be used to send data back to the extension and control what it's doing. So you have a full two-way command control channel. Now, uh, Google limits this synchronization to about uh, once every two seconds. And like I said, the amount of data is also somewhat limited, but still you know, not bad if uh, I can exfiltrate a few kilobytes or so every two seconds and then get a corresponding commands back. That's all that many attackers really need. Your best defense here is probably to audit extensions being loaded into Google Chrome. Google has a feature that allows control of extensions through group policy. So this is where you could approve or then allow a block a certain extensions. And well, sticking with Google Chrome here, Google Chrome's latest update, uh, that was version 88, apparently it did trigger some false positives if you were running Microsoft Defender ATP. It did recognize a file that was delivered with Google Chrome as backdoor PHP. So if you got this alert, uh, well, uh, it should be gone by now. Uh, Microsoft did update its signatures, but yes, it was a false positive. The file that triggered it was Chrome.7z. 
And recently, uh, you probably heard about the social engineering attacks against security researchers that, uh, at least as reported first, were using Visual Studio projects uh, with exploit code in order to then exploit any researchers that were brave enough to open and compile these Visual Studio files. Turns out uh, that the attacker here did not just use Visual Studio files. A security organization in South Korea is reporting that they also were targeted with an Internet Explorer survey. The exploit here arrived as an MHTML file. MHTML files are essentially archives that contain HTML JavaScript and such when you're saving a web page. If you load JavaScript from the local system in a file like this, of course, it does have special privileges. It is able to download additional code. And this, in addition to a vulnerability in an explorer, was then used to attempt and compromise the systems. No word yet if Microsoft will fix uh, this particular vulnerability. Microsoft is still investigating uh, this report of uh, zero day. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday.